What's going on, believers? It's Rebalance with another live price commentary and a funded challenge update. I am not a financial advisor, an investment consultant. I do not claim to be any of those things. Please do your own research. And I provided a beautifully written risk disclaimer here for you to take a look at really quick. But moving on, I first want to pull up just the dashboard of the phase one of the account that I've showed twice, I believe not this Monday, but last Monday. And I want to say this Tuesday were the two days in which I pulled that account up and I actually took trades on it on those particular live price commentary recordings. And so just to write breeze through this really quick, just the equity curve. So it was a $50 cost to me to be able to show my skills to this particular company they start you off with a demo account you trade the demo account and you prove your ability to reach the profit target so you see it was purchased back in april but i didn't start until may and this is the equity curve here pretty much so besides this dip down here which is starting to get scary and then a nice little parabolic run to be honest that's really how price moves when we really uh look into the charts we'll see it's very similar to a lot of the, the ways that price moves but just to pull up the actual account really quick so you can see the executions so this was from that monday over here right when i first started and then there were no trades on the account all the way until this week where I took two, well, I took one loss here. This was at Tuesday. I took a loss with it recording, and I took another loss after the recording was over with. And then all of this, I don't think any of this was actually on the uh, any recordings, but that wasn't the goal here, right? To walk you through this process, but I did want to sprinkle this in here because I did speak about it in a poor man's remedy to fear, my rugged thoughts, episode one, just so that those who are familiar with this business already but maybe not so confident or sure about the funding companies the prop firms as they're called the opportunity it's something that for me personally and again please do your own research i'm not giving you advice i'm telling you from my perspective right what i feel is best for me um trading without a whole lot of extra disposable income or money that one is willing to lose makes it a lot more emotional. And so by taking advantage of these, in my opinion, lower cost opportunities to gain more capital, I believe that then one can take their time and really do it the right way. And so now getting into the chart. So I'm going to, after this, have the recording from this morning but this is pretty much just going back through the week how when it started off i was mentioning this trend line here liquidity line to me how there was buy side build up above each high that engaged with it so above right all of these highs they didn't engage with it but above this high there's buy side which we took out today above this high there's buy side which we took out today and then above this high there's buy side which could it take it out today there's still plenty of time left in the week could take it out next week it could not take it out at all right the point is here it doesn't matter that i was still able to navigate this week even with losses and still come out on top just understanding that i've had the experience needed to be able to do those things i put in the time the energy and the effort to be able to get to where i'm at in my development i truly believe that anyone who is capable of submitting themselves to the required time energy and effort to become good at this can but again that all depends on right willingness like ability is one thing but willingness is another thing and so there have to be a, a healthy blend of the two in my opinion and there's pain involved i said the only guarantee is that you will lose money right so with that being said Shout out to the believers. Next time you hear me talk will be a sped up version of price 
from this morning with my annotations and things like that. All right, so this is just under an hour and a half of price delivery. Sped up to be about 10 minutes additional to the first part of the video. The first part was there's this thing that ICT teaches. They're called weekly profiles. And I just started really focusing on them, I want to say a couple of weeks ago. And so the one I just pulled up was the Wednesday weekly reversal. And I believe that was the conditions that we were in right now. As always, please make sure to pause the video. Um, it is very sped up. Like I said, an hour and a half reduced down to about 10 minutes. So a lot of those text boxes are coming and going really fast, too fast even. So for me to quickly be able to talk about them since I've, I already have a thought that I'm sharing. But so with where it's at right now, just a typical setup for my New York session model. Got the yellow shaded range. And I'm waiting to see price engage buy side or sell side. I'm also right keeping tabs on the dollar index chart and so I set my alert there I want to know when it hits that buy side I anticipate that if it rejects from that buy side lower that that Wednesday weekly reversal for SPX should be in play that was the alert right there so the buy side was engaged and so it's a 15 minute chart that I'm watching so I have to wait until that timer there to the right expires for this current time interval which is 15 minutes and then like let the next candle open up and then a smart idea popped in my head i said hey why not just put them on the same screen side to side because i really don't need too much space today it's friday there's been a, a rather large expansion to the downside already for the week wednesday hit a daily level that could act as support and it did and so going into Thursday, I was looking for a continuation higher as well as Friday. So it wasn't really too much to have it scanned out or zoomed out to really be able to see. I had already come into this day with a bias. Some days I don't really have a bias. I'm just trying to catch a scalp, meaning that I'm just looking for an intraday high or low as my target just because the basis of price delivering to pools of liquidity is the way that I view the marketplace. And so expansion higher was what I was hoping to see today, which is what I was positioned to see today. And I was just qualifying whether or not what I was seeing in price delivery was confirming that my bias was correct or letting me know early, like, hey, this isn't looking too good. Maybe collapse the position, wait until next week and, and try to see if that bias is still something that can be, you know, like engaged. So that alert there was a high from NASDAQ that I've been calling out for weeks now. I haven't been actively trading NASDAQ, but I've been keeping tabs on it, of course because it's correlated with the e-mini S&P. And so NASDAQ has been very bullish, showing an, an unwillingness to go lower. And that was also a part of the reason why I had the confidence that SPX would trade higher today and play out that Wednesday weekly rever reversal profile. And so there we go. I put it back on the screen. So you can see it one more time side by side to the chart. And it's looking pretty much exactly as the profile has laid out. And so buy side has been engaged on the e-mini s p buy side is engaged on a dollar i don't like for them both to trade in sync meaning they move in the same direction but if i'm understanding that there is a drawn liquidity for the u.s stock indices or the one i'm trading in particular i won't always allow the dollar doing the same thing to distract me from what price is most likely reaching for again the experience that i've had over the past couple of years now has really led me to understand when i can trust that they'll do the opposite of each other 
and then when I can trust that I don't need to necessarily put too much weight on the dollar's price movement because just because it's trading higher, what I'm really keeping tabs on is it's trading higher to potential levels of resistance. So those levels of resistance, if they provide some sort of a retracement lower on a dollar chart, that would be all the indices need to have a very large expansion quickly to the area where I believe, right, that there's liquidity resting that price is trying to get to. And so at this point right here, I'm looking at that high that would just print it in S&P. And I'm thinking, okay, is that a speed bump or is that a reversal? What is helping me gauge whether price is continuing higher or not is this inefficiency here, which I've mapped out with two solid black lines and a dashed black line across the middle. So it's the bodies of the candles sit on top of the high of that range. One candle trades down to the midpoint of it, quickly rejects. And so that right there to me was like, hey, if this is going to go higher today, there should be no reason for it to trade back into that range, especially having like a body close within there. Now, the one point to also keep in mind is that that purple shaded area just above, that's another tool that I use that was taught by ICT that if price has a difficult time getting into that range, it can possibly consolidate or even reverse from this exact area. And so that's also something I'm keeping in mind. So I got the lower range from the, the five minute, right, annotated, where pretty much if it violates that, I'm going to collapse the trades that I, that I was in. But on the flip side, if it's able to just continue working its way into that kind of showing hesitation well, all that hesitation is doing is really inspiring those who want to sell to believe that it's hitting resistance it's exhausting that it's going to turn back around and every time they place a sale transaction the stop loss they place is a is a buy stop which is now buy side liquidity that can be attacked while price is running towards a higher time frame pool of buy side liquidity and i know like it may sound very complicated and it's like, yo, liquidity, buy side, sell side, inefficiencies. What is this guy talking about? All I can say is that I'm only using the terms that these things were taught to me utilizing. I'm not a believer in the fact that, well, I'm not a believer in the thought that a certain like person is required to do a certain type of work. It is going back to time, energy, and effort. I don't think that there's anything good or bad that's above or below us. As humans, we've come a long way. Look at the technology we've developed. Look at the things we're able to do on a day-to-day -day basis, thanks to just simply the thoughts of another person that actually became fruition from time, energy, and effort on their part or a, a, the part of a collective. And so looking pretty good right here so far. You see it's worked its way into that range. It's now sitting near the top of it on the right side here. I'm looking at that range, that blue range on M15 for the dollar. I want to see that range ultimately get violated to see a continuation higher. We're very close to the target on SPX. And so now it's left that purple range dollar, not quite violating that blue shaded range, but it also not really trading higher. So as it's just consolidating there, the SPX is taking advantage and it is running, running up towards that buy side, which was left from Tuesday that it never engaged. So boom, it engages that buy side that I was looking for to reach on Tuesday. Finally gets there today, hits that orange line, which is another tool I've learned from ICT. And now starting to show potential signs of reversal, or at least that is going to be a speed bump to cause some retracement or consolidation. Looking at the right side on the dollar, it does eventually end up rallying from that blue shaded area. And so at this point, SPX has hit its objective, dollar failed to continue lower. My day is done. 
Shout out to Believers. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.